It's hard work on a hot day, and a day in Cairo can be very hot. Some soldiers have spiked helmets, but not these. They don't even have spiked shoes. They make the best of what they have. It's a good best. They're strong and tough. Keen and fit enough to clear a bar on a sports field or a ditch in a battlefield. In play or at war, they have all the zest of young men from a strong young nation. They're fit for anything, whether it's parachute troops in Greece or Crete, or the first championship sports meeting of the second NZEF in Prince Farouk Stadium, Cairo. They've traveled long distances, worked hard, trained hard, and the German army knows they have fought hard. And now they are all ready for more, with energy enough and to spare. They know that this is only an interlude, the mile relay. There's keen competition among the spectators as well as the runners. In the excitement, Hitler is forgotten. This is fun, something the Nazis couldn't understand if they knew about it. It's not guns or butter, it's guns and butter. The last meeting of this kind was organized in France in 1918 by the first NZEF. Some of the men who were there then ran at this meeting too in a special event. That other time, German artillery shelled the sports ground at the meeting ended. This time, Hitler's big guns are busy in Russia and France is no longer France. But who cares today? The sun's shining, it's sports day, and the Germans are bogged in Russia or frying in Libya. Here's the mile, they're running on a cinder track in gym shoes. But the track is firm, and even in the heat, the times are fast and the finish is close. Close enough to make the picking difficult. The event of the day, the 100-yard sprint. Perhaps these boys have been getting hints from Italian prisoners. They surely can run. Ten and four-fifth seconds was good time in the conditions. Masters, a dark-skinned islander with an Eddie Tolan stride, was the winner. He comes out with a burst of speed. He's won. That runner might be a real surprise on a good track in proper shoes. Jones, second place, shakes hands. Last war veteran still going strong. For the winners, a smile from Mrs. Freiburg. For Hitler, obviously, a troubled future. The harvest has been good this year. Summer has ripened the grain over many more acres than we have previously cultivated. We need it so. Summer also brings war closer to New Zealand. The war is near to home. Small children know about it. The bread they carry home is sold unwrapped. To help overcome wartime shortages, shopkeepers appeal to customers. Housewives know about it. Now they must call for food that used to be delivered. Each visit to the store reminds them now that war comes daily nearer home. They must walk, and gladly they do walk, while it means that soldiers ride. To bring a basket or paper for wrapping the goods they buy, these are small troubles, cheerfully accepted for the sake of ships and sailors crossing dangerous seas. Out in the suburbs, humanity comes from its shell as the war comes nearer home. The traveler on his bike, calling for the warehouse order from the grocer, assumes again the human dimensions his motor car disguised before. His car now travels on the business of an army, getting ready just in case the war comes too near home. Restrictions on petrol are serious for some. For others, well, there's always a way around a small difficulty like that. Who wants a car anyway? It's good to discover once again the joy of keeping close to simple things. War is not always so serious that people can't find cause for laughter. Motorists see the humor of it with wartime's simple vision for necessities, and they make the best of it. Ride in trams or buy a bike, if they can buy a bike. One of these days, perhaps, we'll all be riding horses, if we can buy horses. The process of adjustment is not easy. War is not a comfortable condition when it comes so close to home. When men go away, women must wrench themselves away from old routines and do men's work. Between calls, this woman taxi driver sews for her family. Men are quickly disappearing from all the jobs that once were theirs alone. The postman's round once needed men's feet for padding along hard pavements. Now women are proudly taking over and finding they can do it too. The war on the home front is more real now than ever it has been. All the ordinary things of life are changed by it. The ordinary ways of doing things are different. Ordinary people do extraordinary things in wartime days. On 
this train, nobody pays fares. On this line, where the train stops, that's a station. Out of the window any time, the view is always the same. It's the Western Desert, with the outside world at one end of the line and a war at the other. New Zealanders are running these trains, and New Zealanders are making the tracks they run along. New Zealanders have built and are building these steel tracks across the Western Desert. With Indian troops to help them with the labor, they have set construction records. They have kept their line close behind the front lines. They have served our armies with supplies. With some machines to help them, but not many, with plenty of skill and tons of energy, but without many of the amenities common even to a rough construction camp, without much water, on hard rations, in heat and dust, and when the cold winds blow. With all these disadvantages, they still have set an unequal pace in pushing their line forward. It sounds like an easy job. The country's flat. No tunnels need be drilled. No wide rivers need bridges. But the sand shifts and blows about, and rocky outcrops make the going hard. By day, there's sun and sand in everything. Not much to drink, no luxuries to eat, and those long straight lines of steel are easy targets for marauding bombers. By night, the air is cold, and winds cut into bodies daily baked by the sun. No, it's not an easy job. But New Zealanders have done it and are doing it. Take a look at these men. One of these days they'll come back home and thousands of others like them. Take a look at their faces. Let us be sure that we remember them. They're not only making a railroad, they're taming a desert and backing up an army that is beating Hitler. And they do it on a smile, hard rations and a sip of water. And they do it well. They are men from New Zealand. Music